Hi, this is Rohas Nagpal. In this video, we are going to look at some of the security options that can be used by us to make our Gmail account more secure. When we try to log into our Gmail account, we notice that it's not just covering our Gmail logins, but we also see all other Google services such as YouTube, Google+, which are accessed through the same username and password. The first thing that I would recommend is that you uncheck this box that says stay signed in. Then of course we log into our account. One thing you would notice here is that my email uh, username appears to be rohasnakpal.demo. Now whether we put the dot or we don't put the dot doesn't really make a difference to the sign in process. This is something like a feature which is given to you by Google wherein you can create multiple email addresses on the fly. I'll come back to this in just a moment. Let's sign in. Now you may end up seeing a screen like this which gives you a very interesting option wherein you can link a cell phone number to your Gmail account and every time that you try to log into your Gmail account from a different computer it would first text you or call you and give you a number which you would need to enter here. Uh, the basic advantage of this is that even if you lose access or you lose control over your password and somebody else gets it they still won't be able to log into your account till they actually also have control of your cell phone. Now this is a feature that we're going to see in some time so as of right now, we'll just simply say save and continue. Now that we are logged in, you'll notice that there are two very peculiar looking emails here. The first one says rohas.nakpal.demo at gmail.com. Now if we really look at it, we realize that this email was sent to the email id rohas.nakpal.demo from rohasnakpal.demo. This is again evidence of the fact that irrespective of how many dots I put into my email account, it would still be my email account. Now look at the second one which is even a little more peculiar. Now here we'll realize that I sent this email to rohasnakpal.demo plus 23 equal to 48 at gmail.com. Now again I can add plus, I can add equal to, I can add numbers, I can add multiple things to the end of my username. It would still remain my email account. Uh, let's take an example to understand how we could use this feature. Say I go to a website called example.com and like most websites they ask me for my email address before they let me log in or create an account with them. Now I would wonder that you know are they really going to spam me a lot, should I give them my email address or not. What I could do is I could enter my email address as rohasnakpal.demo plus one at gmail.com. Create a username password or an account with them. They would send me an email which would come into my account. I would then click on the link, get authenticated and start using example.com but now if I see that they're sending me a lot of spam or you know unwanted messages what I could do is I could create a filter which is something I'm going to show you in some time in my gmail account which says that any email addressed to rohasnakpal.demo plus one should automatically be deleted or marked as spam the benefit now is that without having had to open multiple email accounts I can automatically send unwanted emails into my spam or trash folder. Let's go to the settings and see what other interesting features are available to us. So we go to the settings. Now in settings, the first thing that I would like you to notice is this option which says always display external images or ask before displaying external images. What this really means is that when an email is sent to you and you start accessing it, whether any e external images that have been embedded in that email should automatically open up or Google should give you an option saying do you want to see these images. Now I would recommend that you always say ask before displaying external images. The reason for this is very simple. A lot of email tracking services such as readnotify.com basically embed a very transparent hidden looking kind of an image which helps them to track what IP address you are using at the time when you access that email. More on this I've covered in my video on read notify. So as of right now just remember click on the ask before displaying external images option. The second thing is this option which talks about browser connection. It's recommended that you say always use HTTPS unless you have some very specific reason not to do that. HTTPS is basically supposed to be a more secure version of the hypertext transfer protocol and what this really does is any information that moves from your browser to the gmail servers and vice versa is encrypted using a public key encryption system. 
it's not a hundred percent guarantee that your information is safe but it does help to have this option turned on there are cases in which somebody could do something called a man in the middle attack wherein even though you're using https he could actually forge some of your requests and steal your username and password but we'll probably take more of that in a future video as of right now let's just go with the always use https option the next thing i'd like you to look at is accounts now here google has a very interesting feature where it allows us to send emails from multiple email accounts obviously you have to first prove to gmail that you do own that account there is a very simple system for that what i want you to understand here is you should regularly come to this accounts option and see that no unauthorized email accounts have been added here if someone was able to hack into your account he could have probably added something here so this is something we should look at every once in a while then let's look at the forwarding and pop imap the exact same thing here make sure that there's nothing which looks suspicious or there's nothing unauthorized in this section now let's go to the filters option filters is a very interesting feature of gmail let's create a new filter to see what it really does in this part we are going to be able to set some kind of rules which automate what should happen to certain kinds of emails. Let's take a simple example to understand this. I could say that any email that comes to me from let's say abc at example.com and I can leave all the other options as it is as of right now and then I could say okay what's to be done with this email. Here it says when a message arrives that matches this search here we've just said from abc at example.com what should be done with it? Should we skip the inbox, that means archive it, or mark it as read, or star mark it, or apply a label, or forward it to somebody else, or delete it. Any of these options could be set by us. So let's say I don't want to receive any emails from abc at example.com. I would say, okay, why don't you straight away delete them? Now this feature has been slightly abused in the past, where I think way back in 2007, a very interesting attack was noticed which was called as the cross-site request forgery wherein somebody could create a filter in your gmail account without you even getting to know about it now for this of course what somebody would do is he would make you visit a particular site and in the javascript code of that site a certain request would be sent using the post method to your gmail account to automatically create this kind of a filter and what he would basically do is any emails coming to you he could simply say forward it to himself to the hacker if you want to know more about this attack you can visit my website rohasnagpal.com and read about it so let's go on to something a little more interesting let's have a look at what are the kind of activities that have taken place in our account so in the bottom right hand, right hand corner you see last account activity two minutes ago it says open in one other location what this means to us is Although we are using this account on this particular machine, there is somebody else in the world who is also accessing this Gmail account at this very moment. Now let's click on details and let's try to find out what that is. Once this screen opens up, we see a lot of information here. Now let's look at it. It says that this account is open in one other location. Now what is this location? Concurrent session information shows us that right now there is a browser which is accessing this Gmail account from India using this particular IP address. Of course, we all should understand one thing about IP addresses. They're not very difficult to spoof. And especially if the user is going to use something like the Tor browser, it would be very easy for him to get IP addresses of different countries. But anyway, at least that gives us some information about what is going on. Now, if we click on this button, which says sign out all other sessions, it would basically sign everybody else out of our account. And if we feel that we were being hacked, we would immediately sign the other person out and change our passwords. Then if you look at the recent, recent activity, it shows us that in the past, it's usually been Firefox which has been accessing this account, once Chrome has done that. And we can also see a list of IP addresses. So since yesterday, this account has been accessed from Austria, then Germany, then the USA, then again Germany, again the USA, then India and Germany which is as of right now. It also gives us the time when this thing is last being accessed. Now when it shows such kind of different countries here there are a few possibilities. One is over the last couple of days you actually have been traveling to these countries 
Another option is multiple people have hacked into your account and have been signing in from different locations. Or of course, it's your bunch of friends who you've shared the username password with. And maybe you're using the same Gmail account for various activities. Depending upon what is the reality in your situation, you would figure out what to do next. Then we see something here which says alert preference. So the default option is that Google shows you an alert for any unusual activity that takes place in your account. And for obvious reasons, we are going to let that remain as a default option. If you want to know, have more information about our past access browsers, we can just click here and it gives us more information about what operating system was used by the uh, computer that was actually used to log into this account. So this is the kind of information that shows us here. So here it was a Windows machine. Here we're talking about a Macintosh machine. Of course, this information again is not necessarily 100% true, but it's quite accurate in most cases. Having had a look at all these options here, let's go back to our main screen and let's visit https colon slash slash www.google.com slash settings slash security. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to look at a few more advanced options that are available. Of course, you could use this screen to change your password. We check what two step verification means. Now, one of the interesting features is in this two step verification is that you can set up a phone number or multiple cell numbers wherein whenever you log into your Gmail account from an untrusted computer, it would first send out an SMS to your cell with a small code. You would then have to enter the code here and then only you would be able to enter into your Gmail account. One of the very good reasons that you would want to do something like this is that suppose someone was able to get access to your password, he still wouldn't be able to log into your email account unless he also manages to steal your cell phone. Now in this, we can see that our two-step verification is disabled. So let's click on the setup option and let's see how we can set this whole thing up. We can click on the start setup. We can set, set up our phone number. We enter the number here. Wait for a few seconds while Google verifies that it's a genuine number, which matches the country that we are showing the code of. And then we click on the button to send code. Of course, we also have an option whether we would want a text message or we would want a voice call to verify our authenticity. Once we get the code by SMS, we can enter it here and then we can click on verify. Now, the first thing that it asks us to do is whether we want to trust this computer. What the meaning of that is that as long as you're using this computer or rather this browser, it wouldn't ask you for the code every single time that you log in. I would recommend that you always keep this unchecked so that even losing this computer doesn't really compromise your account that seriously. So we say, don't trust this computer. And then we just say confirm. And that's it. That's been set up very, very simple. Now, another thing that we should do here is that alternatively, we could set up backup numbers here so that in case we lose a particular cell phone, we have an alternative backup number available. And secondly, the backup codes that are mentioned should be printed and kept for future use so that in any particular situation where the Google SMS or voice call is unable to come through to you or you lose your cell phone, you could then use these numbers as the verification code to log in into your Gmail account. And with that, we move back to the earlier screen. We can click on app specific passwords and let us know what kind of apps we've also configured. And then we could see registered computers where it says that this computer is not registered. Well, that was a choice we made and it shows us other registered computers. So when you have multiple devices on which you've asked Google to trust the devices and not ask for that SMS code every time, those would show up here. So again, this is something you would want to regularly come and check that no one has unauthorizedly registered some computers and he would be able to hack into your account using that. I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay safe.